Alright guys, it's Chris from Cartridge Blast Gamers, and this is Space Engineers. First of all guys, I want to say thank you for all the likes and support in the previous videos. Uh, we're really having a lot of fun, and I hope you guys are having a great time too. So remember, please do subscribe, and uh, give us a thumbs up if you really like it. You know, it really helps us out a lot. And uh, if you want us to do something different, go ahead and uh, leave that in the comments. Uh, we could really appreciate some of that uh, feedback. It's really great. So this episode specifically is about me upgrading the base. Uh, after John and his shenanigans in the last episode, I decided to take the resources that we had and went to town on our current base. Uh, I thought it was about time to get it all done, so please enjoy some snapshots and some music as we take you through the construction of the base. So guys, after some resource gathering and what have you, I decided to go back up to the base and came to the realization that I really need to start building a, uh, a mining vessel. And my whole plan really was to make a drone. I really wanted to kind of stretch out my legs here 
and get into the automated systems kind of uh, side of this game. It's got a really nice uh, command block and uh, a whole bunch of other great stuff like the remote control I wanted to play with. So um, I'm going to kind of take you through this build that I did here, uh, which was all for naught. <laughs> and you'll find out why in a second. Uh, basically, I had to build up the chassis, and I wanted to do it in the heavy armor, of course, because, you know, it's going to be kind of beaten up a bit, so it was important. And, of course, you know, the remote control, I had to throw that down on there. And then I went through the systems, and I was thinking, you know, a lot of the things that I wanted the drone to do, uh, I wanted to do it safely. So I wanted to put the drill out a little bit further uh, than I would normally have done, except in this design, I, I really kind of wasn't thinking about it too much, so um, I threw this down and decided to go ahead with uh, the drill on the nose just like it was. Uh, I think it was my main goal was to try to get rid of the profile, shrink the profile down so it would fit in some of the mine shafts that I've already created by hand, but eventually I'm going to have to dig one out and probably do some terraforming and, and really chisel down some rock, so. I put a large car, uh, reactor on this one. I, I didn't want to worry about power. Uh, that should never be an issue, especially with all the uranium that we uh, found in the last couple episodes ago. Um, I just wanted to make sure we had enough power to, uh, to get it started. So, but I didn't load it yet. I didn't load it at all. I wanted a large cargo container for a larger payload. Um, this way I can bring multiple items to the base and to the drill site or just haul ore that was the biggest thing this thing needs to carry a lot of ore so I wanted to do that and then I had to pipe it all together um, the most important thing really I was trying to figure out was what the best way was to pipe this up and um, yeah I, re I really think that when you're building you're, you're kind of like I don't know about you but I, I always instead of building for like design, I always go by necessity. I'm like, okay, what do I need? I need a drill, check. I need a command, like a remote control, check. I'm gonna need cameras and a reactor and I'm gonna need all kinds of other stuff to make this thing function without me being attached to it. So a lot of my designs are really based off of me just kind of like putting the necessary things on it. I never really, I never really think about the design before I start building it because I'm, I'm always concerned by like little details like oh man is this gonna look stupid or is this balanced and I like to try to be symmetrical as possible when I'm building this stuff so I threw a bunch of things on here um, of course none of this was really afterthought it was just basically okay a checklist of things that you want your drone to do the solar panel on the side is actually to jump start it because the uh, the uh, uranium is actually on the uh, in the connector at that point, so as soon as the sun hits it, it's gonna be like oh boom! All right, the re the conveyors bring it over. Uh, I did forget to put a detector on there, so I, I added one after as an afterthought. But once I got the thing going, it, it looked great. I just had to test all the systems and, and get it to work. Um, I did notice though that my turret was was targeting a component on my ship and I'm not sure if it was an ownership issue but I, del I just destroyed the, the turret I don't know it seems safer that way so this is where it comes becomes a shit show um, I forgot to turn on the remote control block so to do autopilot so I'm controlling it and I turned the inertial dampeners off and I thought okay I, I am connected with the antenna all over the place, but I forgot my effective range is only 200 meters. Unless I'm hooked up to another control area, I'm never gonna be able to talk to it. So once I got beyond, it disappeared. Just over the horizon, just like that. And I lost contact. I, I was I was fuming, I was fuming. I didn't have a mic on, but I was fuming. I took the big ship out to look for it. Um, I mean, I, I, I probably looked for this ship for like 45 minutes, guys. I really couldn't find the damn thing. It could be slammed into one of those mountains in the distance. I have no idea. I did a couple of circles around the base. I figured since it was moving pretty quick, it probably got a, a fair distance away. 
but I, I just, I don't know, I, I was so mad, <laughs> I was so mad. I actually just, I put the keyboard down and I, I walked away from the game for a little while. I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. So, after about an hour, or 45 minutes to an hour of searching, I, I decided to uh, just keep, keep dipping down and looking. Uh, maybe it would, maybe it would turn up someplace, I don't know. I was trying, I was trying to... I was, I was actually grasping at straws, I'll be completely honest, I had no idea which way it went after this. I just kept on looking in places, and I found some other ore deposits that I was interested in. And uh, I got low enough to detect them and find out what they were, so I mean, it wasn't a, a huge loss. I actually found a pretty sweet, like, valley, which, you know, this game is beautiful if you ever just sit back and look at the scenery. I, I, love, I love planets. Say what you will about space engineers and stuff like that, but... I just love the fact that they have planets. So, after that time, I decided to go back to base and, and, and park it. And, um, had to recoup my thoughts, kind of, you know. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever been in a situation like this. I don't know, survival's brutal. If you make a mistake in survival, it's, like, very unforgiving, I find. Like, especially, like, if you played on a PvP pl server, you... Like, if you just get attacked and annihilated, if, like, there's not an understanding between you and the other player, like, okay, you know, stop shooting, I, I had enough kind of thing, then you basically have to start from scratch because you, you lose pretty much everything. So, after some deliberation, I decided to gather my thoughts and look at the stars, so to speak. Yeah. And then started again. So, this is actually the, the drone that actually stuck. Now, I, all the mistakes that I made on the previous drone, I, um, I made up for with this one. So, you know, same thing as usual, large cargo container. That was gonna, actually going to be the front and center piece. It's like, it's important. And then I put, and I figured, well, let's do what I originally wanted to do and bring out those drills. I wanted the drills to be far away from the cargo container I wanted it to be like sticking out because they're gonna take all of it all the impact and um, they're gonna be the one doing all the business work let's say so I had to find a way I'm like how many drills can I put on this thing so I actually found a way to get like four on this ship and you'll see um, from the video that I have uh, some scaffolding and that's not permanent I just decided to throw that on there and after I saw that, well, maybe I could put four on here, I decided to try it. So I threw four on there by extending the conveyor system, which really helped out a lot. And it actually um, covers the entire profile of the ship, which is important. So the hole that it drills will always be bigger than the ship. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a long process to build a ship, but actually this is one that I thought about the design, but I thought about what it needs to do before I started building it. So, you know, it goes to show you that maybe my, my method is wrong. You know, function will always follow form. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, form will always follow function, uh, but you're always going to be able to kind of plan out how that function is going to be. So, you know, Never give up on your design. If you start something, you can always modify it and, and then go from there. And, um, you know, I like to hear from you guys, too, to see what, uh, you know, what you guys think, what your thought processes are when you're building this stuff. Because, you know, as you can see from where I'm standing, I'm basically, like, thinking it's purpose first. And then I'm like, okay, what do I need to power this thing? Okay, I need to detect stuff. Maybe I should protect the reactor with blocks, you know, you know, you kind of think you go through your process and, you know, you go through all the things that you need to fly the thing, of course, like gyroscopes and ore detectors and radio components like, you know, the antenna uh, so you can communicate with it. So I continued to build this thing based off of just, you know, kind of the flow. I was like, okay, so this goes here, this goes here, this fits well here. And, um, you know, slapping on the, uh, the ore detector in the front, I knew it would give me some range. And uh, I figured I'd slap a camera in the center. It was like the perfect place to put the camera in there. But I'm not sure, and I guess I'll have to find out later, 
if that's going to be hard to see from like i don't know like i don't use any mods in any of our uh games right now um everything is vanilla but um i've seen a couple of mods that have a, a really nice camera view where it cleans it up and it's not really staticky and stuff and you can actually see out of it so in the future i might go that road um i don't know tell me what you guys think should I go mods or should I not go mods? I don't, I don't know. I haven't decided really. I'm kind of on the fence. But um, the connector design I came up with here was actually... I was impressed with myself because of how cleanly it fit on the back. You'll notice like it's not connected to anything because the pipes are just kind of like sticking straight up. So I had it come down like a horseshoe, like back into the system. Which actually worked out really well because it only stuck up a little bit. And I was, I'm able to basically put motors everywhere. So I started with the dampeners, like the, re, the motors facing towards the front. Uh, it'll be easier for me to label them later when I start setting up the uh, control functions. Um, and then from there, I decided to put the chassis on the rest of the ship. So I, I built up a cage pretty much around the ship so that we could get the motors on. So you can see from the video there that the, the motors are actually key in, uh, in keeping this damn thing up. So I was pretty happy with that too because this actually looks really sharp. Um, the method I used was uh, eight motors facing in every direction. Uh, I figured that would give me enough stability and enough thrust and enough propulsion to keep me up in the gravity. And at the same time, it, when this thing becomes loaded, I should have enough to really just start um, moving in the right direction uh, and not have to worry about any systems overloading. Because that's like the biggest, like the biggest fear with drones. Is like if it gets in a power overload, <clears throat> you really don't know. Like unless you're hooked up to an antenna and like right there watching it, there's really nothing you can do. It's like it's like watching a the Hindenburg explode or something there you just feel powerless so you know after going through uh, all of this stuff I, I basically just decided to you know build this drone um, in a way that I thought that would be really powerful and special um, you know it's not I don't it's a unique design to me because I was it was coming out of my head at the time I don't know how many drones look like this or what but um, I tend not to look at what other people build online um, unless they're doing a let's play and then they're building it in survival because I like to see their thought processes and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, tell me what you think about this uh, mining drone. You think it'll work? Let me know in the comments. Um, <laughs> I'll be, I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say about it because it's kind of, it came right out of my mind. So it's like my creation. I, <laughs> I'm curious to get critiqued about how I built stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see it now you guys are like oh well that sucks you should have put something this that and the other thing and I'll be like yeah I guess that's true I don't really know what you're talking about <laughs> so you have to let me know and again the solar panel uh, jump starts it and as you can see the engines fire right up that I love that little trick it's not too uh, expensive either especially if you have the components already and then uh, yeah the connector will automatically feed into the um, the reactor of course I'll just load it because I'm impatient like that and then we go from there so I threw cameras on uh, not as a as an afterthought but I put them on last just because that was the order of my process just because I wasn't sure where cameras would fit in the design until I was done so yeah as you could see from the video like that quality of that that video camera that's gonna be tough so as an afterthought, I uh, threw a light on, thinking, oh yeah, light, <laughs> it's kind of important. Then uh, I went into the remote control and set up the, um, the, the autopilot function. Uh, I chose the waypoint for the uranium deposit Rob and I found a few episodes ago. So once I did that and initiated it, this thing just started going off by itself. It was kind of amazing. And... Um, I actually had to chase it in spectator mode because I, I, I lost track of it. It kind of disappeared into the darkness. Um, but it, it's actually working. It's working great. So it just kind of flew out there and uh, off into the distance over the mountains. It was kind of amazing. But uh, my time's run out, guys. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I really enjoyed myself. 
Uh, please leave a like and do subscribe. But I'm Chris from Cartridge Blast Gamers, and we'll catch you next time.